Good day everyone, my name is Elena Kachowska. I'm the program manager of the National Bureau of the EU Creative Europe in Ukraine. During the next following minutes, I will give you a bit more of the context which support is given by the biggest program of the European Union for the cultural and creative industries and which opportunity the Ukrainian um, and inclusive art can get. So, as you know, the program of Creative Europe is working um, every seven years, as well as the European Parliament does. So, in 2020, the first cycle of the program is finalizing its existence, and we've got some good pieces of news that the next program will be also scheduled since the next year. As you can see, to the program of Creative Europe, we include 41 country of Eastern Partnership of Europe, including Ukraine, and its support is given to the cultural, creative and audiovisual sectors. As for the budget, you may see that it's really rather huge, that is 1.46 billion euro, which is distributed distributed um, between the years and countries depending on the contest. If you look at the territorial distribution of the program of Creative Europe, you may see that this is def definitely the whole continent. So I would drive your attention to the countries which are included into the program because it's rather important for everyone to apply for the grant support. According to the rules of Creative Europe program, you need to have uh, the foreign partners from these countries. Those are the countries of Creative Europe. I can remind you that is 41 country. This priority is appointed as the main one for the sake of getting acquainted between themselves, all of the cultural and creative sector representatives all together of the whole Europe to provide grant support and to help a bit more to all of you to work at the international level. If you have already applied to the program of Creative Europe, you may know that it is distributed in the sub programs. If you're working in the sphere of performative art, music, design, fashion, architecture, the sub-program of culture provides you the support of 31% out of the overall budget of the program. If you're working with the audiovisual works, the creation of online games, if you're dealing with the co-production of the movies, the sub-program of media can provide you the support up to 56% of the overall budget of the whole Creative Europe. And also 13% is given for the intersectoral cooperation. As every grant program, Creative Europe has its own priorities. First of all, that is the international mobility. In spite of the situation that the 2020 doesn't provide us an opportunity to go to the other countries, to share experience with our colleagues abroad, to develop some project together, still, happily, communication is not over. Thanks to digital methods of the work, we are able to go on to work at the international level and the program of Creative Europe provides support for this work, kind of work. And also, you may expand your audiences, you may work with the new business models and what's ex especially important in 2020, you can digitalize the cultural products and uh, your work. Because, as we can see, it's needed to be rather flexible. You need to be flexible to use all of the accessible technologies to go on with the efficient work. And according to the program of Creative Europe, your organization, depending on the contest, can get various types of grants beginning with uh, several dozens of euro, even up to 2 million euro, if you have more than six organizations from six countries. This year combination can get the maximum of support. And now I'd like to drive your attention to the projects which have been supported for them to inspire you for your work. I would like to begin with the project Orpheus 21, which has begun as a little residence for the musicians' migrants. As you can see, the organizations of four countries were combined together to integrate the musicians better with their migration background. They got the grant of 200,000 euro and went on with their work. During several years, they have become so successful that even now this ensemble, which consists of the musicians' migrants, 
has played several tours all over the world, and they are really now rather respected and well-known ensemble at the international level. As we can see, just a little idea which helped such musicians to find their um, uh, vo vocation in life has grown from the little project, a very small grant of Creative Europe. And also I'd like to drive your attention to the notion of inclusion in the art, in the understanding of the program of Creative Europe, because it exactly supports accessibility of art for everyone. Looking at the example of the project Key Change, Creative Europe supports gender balance in the musical industry. This project gets the support of Creative Europe for the second time, and the second grant is really big, 1.4 million euro. The organizers from three countries united to improve the situation with the gender balance at the musical festivals. That is, the list of the artists performing has to be gender balanced, but during several years of the work of this project, they've already grown to such a big scale that the declaration that they will strive for gender balance has been signed by more than 100 musical festivals and organizations which are working in the musical sphere. Thus, they will be working not only to feel the proper gender balance on stage, but also gender balance beyond the stage, that is, in the organizations and the teams which are preparing those musical projects. The following example would be named the project of Crossing the Line Festival, and again, it began with a rather little idea of three organizations which are working with actors with disabilities. They wanted to unite and to combine their efforts to share their experience and to discuss together certain issues or problems emerging and to solve them together. Gradually, this little pro project has grown up to the International Festival, which now is really an example and a case study where you can see the best and the most innovative methods of work with the actors with disabilities and where altogether the European community has to move to. The last project which I'd like to drive your attention to is the project of Unlabel. It is working with the new rules of inclusive performative art. And the name has been invented on purpose. It is working with the topic of our unity. We shouldn't put labels onto each other or many signs that we are different, that we have different nations, that we have different color of skin, that we have different cultural backgrounds. We shouldn't concentrate that what we are differing with. The most efficient way is to find what really unites us. So this very idea got the support from the program of Creative Europe, the grant of 200,000 euro, and rather huge international acknowledgement. We're really proud that one of the organizations which is supporting on this project is the organization of Kendoko Dance Company, and they will represent their work at the showcase of our forum. So I do appeal you, please, Pay attention to them, because it is really the worthy and high-quality work which will be liked by the wider audience. And the last point I'd like to drive your attention to is the fact that the European Union is moving along the direction of the maximum inclusiveness in the art. And by the way, one of the moderators of the discussion panels of our forum, Ben Evans, used to be involved in the huge meeting of this cluster of the European Arts and Disability cluster, which took place last 2019 year in Brussels. This working group has developed a huge document of guidelines how the, not only the program of Creative Europe, but altogether the European Union in different programs can become more inclusive. First of all, they've recommended to change the working programs a bit 
for the higher involvement of the artists with disabilities. And if it is documented in the working program, it will be provided and implemented in the long-term period. We also have to target the artists with disabilities instead of the overall audiences, as it used to be named and the bigger amount of support will be allocated for this vector and there will be more representativeness. And also the working group really recommended to change a bit accessibility of the application procedure for the fi funding for people with disabilities, so now they provide rather intense work for the artists with disabilities to understand easily how to fill up the form and to have all of the tools for that. And this peculiar attention uh, is deserved by the very little change in the budgeting of all of the contests and competitions for it to get a special separate line of budget for accessibility of the project. It shouldn't be the part of the production or manufacturing expenses, it should be a compulsory part of every project, it should be accessible. And also we are discussing the opportunity to introduce a separate contest or priority for the artists with disabilities, which again will increase their representatives. The nice news is that the next program of Creative Europe will have continuation since 2021 till 2027. So now we are waiting from the European Parliament for the appro approval of the new budget and the new working program for the beginning of the 2021 and to make you aware which competitions will exist, which amount of help will be provided and which schedule and calendar plan of the work will be there for you to prepare even now your project ideas and applications and to speak to the foreign partners what you'd like to work on together during the next following years. And the last point, to motivate you a bit, because the program of Creative Europe is not only about the money, but more about the direct foreign partnerships and contacts. Because if you work with some foreign organization for several years, maybe you'll get to know lots of things together and you will be able to go on working even after you fa uh, finalize the use of grant because such communicate really helps and you can't only find your partners but also your potential friends. And again, thanks for the experience sharing. You will be able to study a lot at the international level from your partners and really to achieve a high quality new level of your work, both of the organization and your team. And again, training is ongoing because experience sharing and some first developments will be open for you so you will be able to use them in your work as well. Our bureau, the National Bureau of the Program of Creative Europe in Ukraine, is working on a permanent basis to consult you, potential apply, uh, appliers. All of the consultants are done for free, so if you've got any questions how to get support from the Program of Creative Europe, you, are always, uh, you can always write an email for us or make a phone call and we'll definitely consult you. So have a good luck in your project.